Hi, I'm Philip Magnus. Welcome back to my show. You know, I haven't done this in a little while, so I may be a teeny tiny bit rusty. But let's talk about the main story of the day, probably of the week, possibly of the month. Yes, that's right, Fallout 4. Fallout 4 was released earlier today. Well, really, it was released around midnight, Central European time. And it is amazing. It is. It really is. It has a great ambience, the story seems very promising, the world shows a bit of depth that I thought was somewhat lacking in Bethesda's last game, which was, in case you don't remember, Skyrim. Honestly, I can't wait to see the depth it will have after I play about a hundred thousand hours of it or so, but hey, that's around the time when you can tell with Bethesda's games. Fallout 4's release is, well, practically amazing. Not a single bug, not a one of them. No, no, not even a single one. It's perfect, it's the best game Bethesda has ever done. I'm certain you will, as hard and as long as you look, you will not find a single bug in the game. That's right. A lot of people are unhappy with Fallout 4's Pip-Bo edition, citing that it is nothing but a cheap plastic replica that has the intent of stealing the money away from the people, apparently. Or whatever they called it. Yeah, they're not happy about it. Apparently it's not as good as they thought it would be. But hey, don't be surprised, not many collector's editions with big plastic things are as good as they sell them out to be. But enough about Fallout 4, you've probably seen too much of it already, even if you haven't played it yet, because everyone and their mothers are talking about it. Let's talk about something that my mother is going to buy for me. Starcraft Legacy of the Void. Starcraft Legacy of the Void is coming out today! How exciting, right? It is going to introduce the final chapter of StarCraft II's campaign story. Well, possibly not the final chapter, because in case you haven't been listening, during last weekend's BlizzCon, Blizzard actually announced that they will be shipping out new story missions in tiny little packs starting next year. The first of these packs is centered around Nova Terra, which is a really, really weird name. But hey, I'm not Blizzard, I'm not quite as fond of their cheese as they are, although I love it, that's why I loved StarCraft 2's first two campaigns, which were Heart of the Swarm and Wings of Liberty. Heart of the Swarm was better, not too good. Anyway, I've lost my point. What else did Blizzard announce during BlizzCon? Ah oh yes, they announced Overwatch's pricing model, which, spoilers, is going to be a full price game. Well, not quite as full price as most games, it's not going to be a 60 euro or 60 dollar release, it's actually going to be a 40 euro release, but be not afraid. If you like your full releases, full 60 dollar releases, you can actually opt in to buy the Overwatch Origins Edition, which has all manner of goodies along with the 21 heroes and a dozen map maps or so. The Origins Edition is going to add six skins, six origin skins, that's where the name comes from, see, to the game's arguably coolest characters. Tracer, Reaper, Soldier 76, among others. It will also add a bunch of goodies for Blizzard's other games. Portraits, card bags, a pet Winston in World of Warcraft, which kind of looks cute. Too bad I don't play World of Warcraft anymore, but hey, with Legion that may change, because Legion looks very good. Blizzard actually released a trailer, a new full CGI trailer for you guessed it, World of Warcraft Legion. And talking about Warcraft, one can't help but mention the Warcraft movie trailer, which debuted during BlizzCon's opening ceremony. Why? I have no fucking clue. 
but it looks fantastic. Blizzard really outdid themselves this year, while last year's main attraction was Overwatch in the announcement of that. Today we had major announcements about practically all the games. I've already covered a lot of those, but they also announced a new adventure park for Hearthstone, which doesn't have anything to do with an old World of Warcraft raid. Cool, right? They also announced a bunch of things about their hero brawler. Four new heroes, one of them Tracer, the teleporting, trigger happy, hello love, English creature from Overwatch, and that was cool. But before Tracer debuts, we've got three other characters. Chogol, the first two-player character in the game, and probably in all the genre as well. I can't think of anything like that having been done by this point, which is, don't get me wrong, really cool, really experimental, I like it, but hey, let's wait and see whether it works. Probably it will. If it wasn't going to, they wouldn't have announced it. Because it's coming this month, soon, so stay tuned for that, I'll be making videos about Chogol's gameplay. They also announced Gen Greymane, who is the Worgen leader of the Worgen Alliance faction in World of Warcraft, which is really, really, really quite cool. He's a shape-shifting human Worgen, and he will introduce a dual playstyle that hasn't been done in Heroes of the Storm until now. The third character announced is a dryad, the daughter of Scenarius, which is poisonous and pretty scary. She looks damn fine too. But this is not the end for all the Heroes of the Storm announcements. Blizzard also announced a new battleground and a new mode, the arena mode, which is not going to force you to play with the characters you've bought already. It is going to give you access to three characters from the entire hero pool of Heroes of the Storm. Blah, blah, blah. Heroes of the Storm, I said! But enough is enough. I think that has been a good enough summary of what happened during BlizzCon. And honestly, if you want to read more about it, you just have to check out any of the major gaming news outlets. Go there and read more. Read to your heart's content. Thank you for watching. I really enjoyed our little tete-a-tete. And I hope I will see you next time.